everyone this is the uh, home lab video for suricata suricata ids and ips okay uh, this entire video has been divided into two parts first section first lesson will be on the introduction to suricata and the next part will be about setting up the home lab you can look at the timeline and uh, you know can can locate the lesson about home lab and skip this entire section for those who are interested about suricata uh, you can just take a closer look into it okay so let's understand suricata is is an uh, open source ips and ids solution uh, it it's give you the ability to focus on detection capability okay it it, it helps you with uh, complete visibility of the network why suricata is required is majorly because of two things threat detection and visibility when you deploy a solutions like ips and ids this is helpful uh, because uh, you know sorry when you deploy a solutions like antivirus or firewall solution you completely rely on those solution okay so for example if you install a firewall okay or antivirus solutions or uh, maybe a uh, phishing anti phishing solution or maybe uh, email filtering solution right so these are all prevention technique as in it means that uh, when you deploy them you forget it right you completely let the software to take the action on it you don't get the complete visibility about what all happening for example if your system if your firewall itself or your antivirus itself get bypassed by any advanced malware you will never know about it right so you need to be very focused on detection capability right but again this requires some human intervention as well you require some human intervention to look at those packet and uh, you know do the initial triage triage and you know remove false positive because you, when you deploy ids or ips kind of solution there are chances you will come across and you will encounter quite a lot of false positive as well okay so uh, many many people say that well, what's the in fact this is the interview question as well what is the difference between ids and uh, ips well ids is intrusion detection system ips is intrusion prevention system uh, suricata can be deployed in both both mode ids is is detecting the uh, uh, detecting the intrusion like anomalous behavior any threats into the network suspicious activity and uh, report it to the admin and the admin will take action on it on the other hand ips is is uh, you know can detect the threat and can take the action as well that's why the name is intrusion prevention system so you may wonder rajesh but if that's the case why would someone go for ids then why don't we simply go for ips straight away right well because if you go for ips the chances are you might also disrupt the business as well because as i said earlier you might come across a lot of false positive cases or you know mul multiple issues as well so you don't want your network to get uh, your business critical application to get hampered as well so initially in the initial level you start with ids then you move to the ips or sometime it's a mix and match situation you you know you have to work on both of it okay so that's about it and you need the complete visibility into the network as well you need the visibility about what all happening in the network environment so that's the one reason and second is you need to detect the uh, suspicious activity uh, threats into the network as well okay so that's the second reason why do you need uh, suricata okay capabilities okay there are quite a lot of capabilities that suricata has signature based detection you can actually create the rules uh, more there are quite a lot of inbuilt rules uh, uh, delivered by emerging threats uh, uh, they they share f free rules for suricata uh, anomaly based detection so it can detect suspicious traffic into the network for example uh, maybe if there's a sudden rise in the traffic for a specific user that's anomalous behavior if let's say usually if you look at the http traffic it consists of user agent right user agent is your browser name when while talking to the web browser right while talking to the internet or web server 
uh, it could be a chrome it could be mozilla it could be anyone right it, uh, microsoft edge but if it is something like uh, you know uh, maybe uh, random 1 2 3 maybe so that's suspicious it can it shouldn't happen right so it also look at the anomalous behavior multi threading support it can process quite a lot of data that's why it's it's very powerful protocol support it support multiple protocol from tcp udp http smtp ftp dns many more you also get an option to customize the rule as well so the at the end the point is surikata is more like a firewall rule uh, that you create but it majorly look at the traffic header okay uh, that's why it is very very advanced because if you look at the firewall it look at the source ip destination ip port number and nowadays next generation firewall it utilize the application id as well but next generation firewall also has a capability to inbuilt the ips as well so this ips is actually get integrated with it so most of the organization have their own i uh ips they those are commercial like checkpoint has got their own ips uh other vendor fortigate has got their own ips uh cisco uses ips not ips which is again open source semi open uh, semi free or open source i would say because they have a community version and they also have a paid version surikata is completely free okay now this is about capability practical use case you can deploy surikata for network security monitoring for incident response if you deploy into the ips mode okay so in this case if you can specify if this happen this is what you have to do you have to drop the packet you have to intimate what is okay it depends it also helps you with the threat hunting as well okay so uh, now we know that uh, what is surikata surikata is of course as i said ips and ids network security monitoring tool now let's work into home lab what is really required to set up the home lab or maybe to set up the surikata on our home lab we require ubuntu server we need ubuntu server 20 22.04 okay that's the version we need it and um, uh, once you have your server we'll we'll continue with the rest of the process so let's get started let's get started guys on your right you have your ubuntu server on which we have to install surikata ids and ips and on your left we have the steps okay you can find the step by step process in my github repository don't worry i'll share you the link in the description below okay so you can follow the first step install the surikata on the endpoint uh, let's copy this paste it here and let's wait for the installation process to complete i'll hit enter okay okay you can see the first step is to you know uh, check the uh, on the repository for surikata then you update the packages and then you install the surikata okay so that's the entire process oisf is the organization who maintain the surikata repository okay um uh, Yeah, so looks like it's complete. Awesome. So the installation is complete. Next step, we are going to install the emerging threats Surikata rule set. Okay. Currently, we have Surikata. You can see even if I type Surikata, the command is coming up. You can see it. Even I can type help. It's giving me the all, all the manual as well. So Surikata is complete. Uh, currently installed. You can see all the files related to Surikata can be found in the etc Surikata. Okay, and you, if you do ls, you'll find everything about it. Okay. So uh, what is really important is we we need to have uh, you, we need to have the Surikata. changes i mean we need to modify the surikata configure i mean we need to install the surikata rules sorry we need to install the surikata rules emerging threat is the organization uh, open source organization that maintains the surikata rule set uh, without the rules surikata is nothing okay so rules are very important currently i think surikata i mean emerging threat this group has been acquired by proof point that's the email security solution uh, let's search you can see emerging threats yeah and it's under proof point as well perfect yeah so let's copy this and paste it here let's come out 
let's do this. The rules will be installed and you can see the list of all the rules. You see this? But the problem is we got some error here. Okay, yeah. Uh, the rules is we, 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 we are trying to install the rules in this directory rules slash, but it seems the rules directly does, doesn't exist. So let's check it out. ETC Suricata. Yes, we don't have this directory. So let's do it. Let's create a new directory. Uh, MKDIR rules okay and um, let's do it again uh, let's we have created the directory now let's copy paste it and it should work this time right perfect it worked okay now if you check uh, uh, now if you go in the same directory cd etc suricata rules we should see perfect we see everything right now let's modify the configuration. The next step, we got the Suricata install our, on our Ubuntu machine. We got all the rules. We have to now customize our Suricata as per the configuration. Okay. So let's do this. Um, we'll have to open the configuration file, which is an etc Suricata Suricata YAML file. Okay. Under this, you see First, we need to set up the home net, home net IP address. Oh, we then copy the IP address, our own IP address. So our own IP address is this 103.189.88.222. Okay. Let's come here again and under the home net. Okay. Now let's, let's do this. Okay. We have added our own IP address in the home net. That's because that's our own IP address. That's that's home net, right? And in the external IP address, because our server will be in public network, so we we don't know from what would be the external network, right? So we'll keep it any. So any external IP address will be treated as uh, external network. Okay. Now we also have to modify the default rule path, and um, you can search for this directory directory rule path. You can type from control W and um, it's a rule path, right? Let's search. Perfect. It's here. Let's set it to our default directory, which is on its, which is in HC Suricata slash rules. Correct. And then rule files are also there, there's not just one rule file, right? So let's make it a wild card. So we'll say this, any rules, any rule file that's ending with dot rules will be considered. Okay. Now let's check this global stats configuration. It should be set to, uh, should be set to yes. Enable yes. by default. It is enabled. So yeah, it's all good. Now let's go to the AF packet, AF packet, eat zero. All good. Yeah, yeah, all good, all good, all good. Now let's come out. Okay, control X. Yes, hit enter. That's it. Okay. Now we have to restart the Suricata process in order for this to work. It's done. Now, uh, Okay, uh, now let me check the status of Suricata if it is system CTL status Suricata. Perfect. You can see it's active and running. So all good for us. We can also verify the logs. That's that's a one. Uh, that's a better way of verifying it. Uh, the logs are stored in a different directory altogether. Let's clear this up. And locks are stored in the slash. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think it's var log suricata. Yeah, somewhere here. Yeah, so these are the two locks which are used: a suricata log and fast logs. Okay, so these are the two logs that we can use. Uh, even if you do the tail f, tail minus f, and fast log, you can see the 
logs coming up but because we don't have we we are not doing anything on it so we won't see any logs as such okay yeah we don't have any logs as of now or you what you can do is you can even do the nano for it for surikata to see in any past log as well so yeah we do have some past logs so this is all good we can even see for the fast log yeah we we had some logs of you right so this is all good let's let's launch some attack or reconnaissance to see if if we have some if we are having some if this entire surikata is working properly okay so let's do the tell so that we can get the live packet live logs that for that reason we'll be using the tell fast f or fast logs and over here what we can do is we can run the nmap scan let's run the nmap scan on this ip address what's the ip address i think this is our ip address right All right, so it's been initiated, and because this is complete scan, wonderful. Can you see this? Can you see this? Yeah, FTP, SSH, and everything. I think we should see port twenty two somewhere. Port twenty two, twenty two, twenty two. Um, there are quite a lot of port which has been scanned. You can see all these ports has been three three eight nine. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, not three three eight nine. Three 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 eight nine. There are multiple ports has been scanned, so it's giving us the alerts on it, right? You see this. So the alert name is ET. ET belongs to emerging threat drop, and the name of the traffic. Then you can also see the Oracle. Do we have Oracle related traffic initiated? I think so. Yes, but it might have got dropped. So you can see miscellaneous attack. classified as miscellaneous attack potentially bad traffic and what you see is et it's the emerging threat right you remember and this is the name of the traffic you can even check that in the database it's postgres uh, sql so yeah we have got postgres scan as well this is uh, information leak perfect perfect so it's working as expected wonderful so our surikata lab work work very well so if you have any question about the surikata or anything that we just did do let me know i uh, write it write it in the comment section i would love to answer that thank you so much for watching